OMG, as all the kids on their TikToks like to say, I guess, I don't know. We're here for another video. Look at that. We're here uh, to do a little return to our roots. Uh, I've been doing the dark sides and the secrets and all that stuff, but today we're just going to cover straight up history, baby. We're going to be going right back to the history of New York, and we're going to cover the Staten Island Ferry. Yeah, in case you can't tell from the gigantic letters behind me, that's what we're going to be covering. Uh, and you may be thinking, wait a minute, Tom, isn't that just a boat that goes from one side to the other? Well, first of all, uh, don't ever interrupt me again. <laughs> don't even think about it. And second of all, uh, there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of information you don't know. There's a lot of people who take this thing every day. They don't know anything about it. So today I'm going to try to correct that. First of all, it's free, which is pretty awesome. You know, it's one of the cool free things to do in New York, uh, aside from, you know, feeding the squirrels or something weird. Uh, so it's a cool thing to do. Before we start, guys, check out the Patreon. You know, there's some free stuff on there. You know, <laughs> uh, all, all PG. Uh, also, too. Uh, like the video, subscribe, uh, and I know that's kind of weird to ask since you haven't seen the video yet, but if you've seen other ones, you kind of get what it's going to be. It's going to be pretty good stuff. Uh, that being said, Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm excited to see the ferry again. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good boat, a good ship. Uh, not a lot of people know stuff about it. You know, it's cool too. We're going to be on one location all day, huh? It's going to make it a lot easier. That's nice too. Yeah, right? Uh, it gets a little cold out there, you know. Yeah, it does. Very, very temperature sensitive. That's true. You're a very delicate man. Uh, what are you but, gonna do? <laughs> you know, you can't can't uh, can't change the hand you're dealt at birth, I guess. But it's gonna be a good good time. It's a beautiful day. You know, you got the the call of the wild. You can hear the the seagulls. You can hear the the pigeons chirping, and you can hear those sweet Staten Island accents, baby. So it's gonna be a nice uh, nice trip on the uh, the ferry. You ready to do this thing? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right, so we're now in the Whitehall Terminal. This is where you get on the ferry to go over to the St. George Terminal, which we'll be at later, to get to Staten Island. Now, just so you guys know, Staten Island is the, uh, the least populated borough with about 470,000 people, which is still around the population of Tampa, which is kind of crazy, but it's, it's actually twice the size land-wise of Manhattan, which is kind of cool. Uh, now, keep in mind, in 1683, all the counties of uh, New York, the colony of New York, were created by the British. Richmond County was Staten Island. In fact, the borough of Staten Island was actually referred to as Richmond until 1975. Oh, isn't that cool, Eric? It is cool. Uh, you don't sound convinced, but just so you know, there's still a Duke of Richmond. That was actually the whole point. They named it after the Duke of Richmond. And today, the Duke of Richmond is this guy. Yeah, well, it's still named after uh, him because it is still Richmond County. But, uh, but this is the ferry that takes you over to Staten Island. It's the only free way to get onto the island. Uh, it's been featured in lots of movies. In fact, uh, well, oh, uh, Working Girl, starring Melanie Griffith. You ever seen that, Eric? Working Girl? Yeah. No. Eh, you're not missing out a lot. Also, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, which uh, they had a big battle on the ferry. I, I think that's the, the 57th movie in that franchise. Uh, also, um, what else? How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, uh, starring Matthew of the Clan McConaughey. Uh, here's the spoiler alert. Uh, you lose a guy in 10 days by forcing him to watch that movie. Um, but it's really cool, and the, the trip is free, and it's a great view. It's about 25 minutes, 5.2 miles. What do you think, Eric? Should we get on? What does it take to be the Duke of Richmond? Uh, a lot of money, royal ancestral blood, <laughs> probably. I don't know. That's a lot of judgment. So this is not a job aspiration. No, I'm not going to be the Duke of Richmond. Right. Uh, I'm trying to be the Duke of Ridgewood over here. You know? All right. All right. You ready to get on this thing? Yeah, let's, let's go. go. All right, so we're actually on to the Staten Island Ferry now, and as I was saying before, it is about 5.2 miles, uh, 25 minutes-ish of a ride. So as I was saying before, the Staten Island Ferry takes you from Whitehall Terminal over to St. George Terminal, which we're heading to now. It's about a 5.2 mile trip, uh, about, well, peak days, it's close to 70,000 people make this trip on 117 different trips back and forth. Uh, that's like, I don't know, 22-ish million a year, man. That's a lot of people. Um, if you look in the harbor, you'll see these big orange ships bouncing around. Those are the Staten Island Ferries. In fact, back in the day, they used to be white and then maroon and then orange. And the reason is because you can see it in the uh, fog, you can see it in the rain, and you won't hit it on your jet ski while you're trying to take selfies or something. One of the cool things about the uh, ferry is that it's uh, free. So this is actually a good cheap date, huh, fellas? Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be a smashing success of an idea, but uh, you know, you got to find yourself someone who appreciates the little things, okay? 
So, you know, get a coffee, sit on the Staten Island Ferry, taking nice views of the Statue of Liberty, huh? Uh, you know, also too, interestingly enough, the cabins used to be separated by men and women up until like the mid-1900s, pretty crazy. Uh, which means that the Staten Island Ferry was probably run by eighth graders, it sounds like, back then. Uh, but a lot has changed. The history of the Staten Island Ferry is actually very interesting. Let's go into that now. All right, so let's talk about the uh, illustrious history of the Staten Island Ferry. Now, there were ferries going back and forth as early as, like, you know, obviously the Native Americans would shuttle each other in the 1600s before the Dutch arrived. But even in the 1700s, there were ferry services and sailboats. The problem was, in bad winds, it would take, you know, two to three hours to get across. Some good podcast listening time. You could, you know, really bite into a podcast at that time, but that's not good enough. So this word gets interesting. In the 1800s, 1810, this guy named Cornelius Vanderbilt, who was from Staten Island, he spent a hundred bucks and bought a Perry auger, which is a sailboat, a little sailboat, and he started shuttling people across. Oh, interesting. Uh, he was 16 years old when he did that, by the way. 16 years old, man. I mean, when I was 16 years old, I was busy, you know, yelling at my zits to go away. And this guy's, you know, starting a business, which actually took off during the War of 1812. Oh, he turned it into cargo and all these other things. 1817, uh, the Richmond Turnpike Company is started by a man named Daniel Tompkins. This guy was a former vice president of the United States. Uh, you guys may recognize his name from Tompkins Square Park, which I have covered in the East Village video. Oh. Tompkins Square Park, great place to go catch some colorful characters. Uh, in the video I did, some guy told me to stop <laughs> filming him while we were filming, which was interesting. I wasn't filming him, but anyways, that's, that's beside the point. So that's 1817. Now, 1880 was a very important year because that's the year that the Staten Island Rapid Transit Railroad Company was formed by a man named Erasmus Wyman. He actually was able to get some of the land over on Staten Island. Uh, from a guy named George Law. We're gonna talk about all that later. He got more land, et cetera. was able to, to develop the St. George Terminal eventually uh, to kind of, you know, give us what we have today. Um, so this is a big deal, right? Um, that's when these ferries start going back and forth on this set schedule. It becomes kind of what we know it as today. And also, to keep in mind, there used to be Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn routes, routes from uh, Staten Island to Brooklyn that eventually faded away once the Verrazano Bridge was opened in 1964. Oh, the Verrazano Bridge, named after Giovanni de Verrazano, who was an Italian guy who was the first guy to lay eyes on New York Harbor in 1524, before Henry Hudson, who I talked about in a video. You know, you should take that out. All right, but uh, he actually didn't, you know, explore it and do all that stuff, and it was a different time in Europe also as well, so they weren't able to take advantage of it. He was sailing for the French. That's beside the point. So uh, that's finished in 1964, so they don't need the routes as much anymore. So today, all we have left is this route from St. George to Whitehall, uh, the Whitehall Terminal in Lower Manhattan. Oh, interesting. Also, too, 2000, uh, 1997 is an important year. That's the year that the fare of the ferry was eliminated. It used to be uh, 50 cents to ride the ferry. Uh, in fact, when it initially opened, it was 5 cents, but we got rid of the fare in, in 1997, and today it's free. And today it's also the busiest ferry service in the United States. Huh? Did you know that, Eric? It's also the busiest passenger-only ferry service in the entire world. P pretty cool. They actually allowed cars on this ferry up until 2001 after uh, this thing that happened called 9-11. Uh, you ever heard of it? Never forget. Never forget. Can't forget it. But that, uh, after that, they didn't allow cars on these things. So, go figure. Which all that begs the question is, uh, how safe is it? Well, it's pretty safe. Nothing's really gonna happen. You wanna have police officers on here, but also too, the, the ships, they do hundreds and hundreds of trips a week. So, you know, they're pretty used to it. But things have happened in the past, which will lead us to our next little segment. Some interesting little historical disaster events of the uh, Staten Island Ferry. Not to get too dark, <laughs> you know, all right. Okay, so this is where the, the stories get interesting. We're gonna talk about some of the disasters that have happened on the Staten Island Ferry throughout its history. So the biggest one was in 1871, the Westfield explosion. The Westfield II was a ship, as it was docked at the uh, Whitehall Terminal, it just exploded, it was a steamship, so it exploded. 126 people died, 200 were injured. What happened was this, the boiler exploded. So people were scalded with boiling water, people were trampled, people were pushed overboard. Total disaster. Accidents like this happened back then. It was the 1800s. I mean, you know, people thought the bridges were falling just because they moved. I mean, people were trying to heal each other with whiskey. So, you know, things are expected uh, back then, but things have also happened more recently. 1928, the Bronx 
uh, ship actually took in water because it was a really choppy seas. They took in like five feet of water. Five people went overboard. Three of them died on their commute. That's pretty messed up, man. You're, you're just reading the you know the newspaper and you're you know you fall overboard and you have to swim for your life. Yeah, I don't think any of us would survive that. Anyways, the most recent disaster was the Andrew J. Barbarian, 2003. October 15, 2003, the ship Andrew J. Barbary crashed into the pier at St. George. Uh, it cut a huge gash in the side of the ship. Uh, 11 people died. Uh, you know, 70-ish were injured. People had their, you know, were maimed. It was a total disaster. Uh, what happened was the captain, the, the, the boat, uh, captain was uh, he was on painkillers he took a bunch of painkillers he wasn't even going to come into work but he said i'll be all right he took a bunch of painkillers came into work and fell asleep and passed out at the helm pretty messed up uh in fact the other pilot who's supposed to be in the cabin was kind of wandering around and that was something the ferry director did not enforce uh he came in it was too late uh total mess in fact richard smith the captain hauled ass man he left as soon as they docked, went home, and he tried to kill himself, actually. He shot himself with a pellet gun, uh, which, not exactly effective, so he survived that. Um, went to jail, actually, for 18 months. At court, all the families of the victims came in. The ferry director was also charged and went to jail for a year for not enforcing that two, you know, boat persons per uh, docking in the wheelhouse rule. I'm sure that's not the official name, uh, but it was a total mess. Uh, and that all happened there. And interesting fact, in 2010, the same boat got into another crash. Like 37 people were injured, but luckily no one died. And guess what? We're on the Andrew J. Barberry right now. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Yes, we're, we're on it. Uh, so hopefully we're, you know, nothing happens to us. Also interesting fact, the, um, the families of the victims tried to push the officials to change the name to honor the victims. Uh, and they said no, the officials said no because Andrew J. Barberry uh, uh, had too many important, uh, I guess, contributions to Staten Island. What were those contributions? He was a very successful high school football coach. God forbid you take away those accolades from a high school football coach. Unbelievable. Well, I don't know, I guess people have different priorities. What can you say? So the first thing Richard Smith did after taking painkillers was operate extremely heavy machinery. He obviously didn't read the bottle, uh, and you know, that disaster is what ensued. Still fresh in people's memories here. Um, what do you think, Eric? This is kind of crazy, huh? This boat's a little shaky, are we safe? <sighs> is it safe? That was a little movie yeah, reference? Yeah, that was nice. Thank you. I noticed it was also a uh, question dodge. Yeah, is it safe? That's a Marathon Man reference. Uh, anyways, a uh, little New York movie, a little recommendation there. Uh, but yeah, it's safe, I think. I mean, uh, we had some food. My hot dog's kind of jumbling around in there. How's your? You ate a pretzel. How's that? How's that sitting? Uh, maybe we sit down. Maybe we should sit down before you uh, before you Ralph all over the lens. We get that effect. Uh, anyways, uh, I think we're about to dock here. So so uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's let's wait till we do that, huh? Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> So we're here at St. George, which is uh, the northernmost, I guess, uh, neighborhood here in Staten Island. Uh, we're actually next to some outlet, a little outlet mall, uh, which in case you don't know what an outlet mall is, it's where you can go get uh, like brand name stuff for pretty cheap. Only catch is that there's like something off about it. You know, it's like you can get a, a polo shirt, but it's, you know, two sizes too big and neon green. Uh, so if you want to go buy stuff, you can come here. Um, anyways. Yeah, you got the, the view of Manhattan in the background. Remember that place, Eric? The Isle of Manhattan. The Isle of Manhattan. Uh, but a pretty cool view here. You can see the, the ferries. This is where I was talking about the, uh, the Barbary crash actually happened right into this uh, pier. St. George, by the way, it's called that because of a man, a businessman named George Law, who relinquished his rights to a lot of this land so they could build this terminal and this kind of neighborhood. Uh, it was kind of the brainchild of this guy named Erasmus Wyman. Uh, you know, he kind of uh, put it all together over here, kind of hit on that history a little bit when we were on the, that old boat, you know. Um, but one day I'll do a, we'll do a walking tour of, uh, of Staten Island. That'd be a lot of fun. We could talk about Saturday Night Fever, huh? Might have to do a driving tour. Yeah, we would. We would have to do it. You ever seen Saturday Night Fever? Yes. It's that movie with that guy from uh, Battlefield Earth. I've seen that as well. I'm sure you have. After recommending me the Matrix movie, the new one, and you must have seen Battlefield Earth. Unbelievable. Anyways, uh, this is kind of where we end the whole thing. Um, 
Also, to keep in mind that uh, Staten Island is the only borough that isn't plugged into the subway. Uh, it has its own train that's run by uh, New York MTA, but uh, it's just here in Staten Island, and it doesn't come that often. But uh, great views. It's pretty cool, huh? Anyways, we're going to probably end here. Uh, nice little walk. Uh, guys, if you can, check out the Patreon for all the extras. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> also, too, please like it, subscribe, do that whole thing. Eric, what do you think, man? That was pretty good, huh? Pretty, uh, pretty relaxed little little boat ride, huh? It's a great trip. It's a great, it's a great trip. Great trip, great view, nice day, not too cold. Didn't have to wear long underwear today. But uh, yeah, other than that, man, I think we're pretty much done. What do you think? Should we go, uh, go outlet shopping? Maybe get uh, a Gucci sweatshirt that's too big with a with an oversized G on language. it? What's that? You're speaking my language. All right, let's do it. All right, guys. Well, that's it. I'm going to take off now. See you all later. Sick.